First up are ligand-gated channels. These open or close when a chemical, like a neurotransmitter, binds to them. That binding causes the channel to change shape and either allow or stop the flow of ions. A good example is the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor at the neuromuscular junction. Next are voltage-gated channels, which respond to changes in the membrane's electrical potential. When the membrane depolarizes, a gate opens quickly to let ions in. A moment later, another gate, often referred to as the ball and chain, swings shut to stop the flow. This rapid open and close system is essential in nerve signaling, like with voltage-gated sodium channels during action potentials. Then we have phosphorylation-gated channels, which are controlled by chemical modification. When a kinase enzyme adds a phosphate group to the protein, it changes shape and opens. One example is the CFTR chloride channel, which plays a role in cystic fibrosis now, and is regulated by PKA phosphorylation. There are also mechanically gated channels which respond to physical forces like pressure, stretch, or vibration. When the membrane is deformed, these channels shift and open. You'll find these in sensory receptors, like touch sensors in the skin and hair cells in the ear that detect sound.